And even though the Cuba rallies have been mostly peaceful in our area and across the state, they can still be cited under that controversial law. Our political editor, Craig Patrick, is here now with a closer look at the law and the backlash it's receiving. Craig? Hi there. Well, the governor, of course, calls it the anti-riot law. His critics will often call it the anti-protest law on grounds that it does include language within the bill that became law that would seem to apply to a lot of people involved in the peaceful and the mostly peaceful protests that we've seen from Tampa to Orlando to Miami. In Tampa, these protesters for a free Cuba block traffic on Dale Mabry. In Miami, these protesters for a free Cuba block traffic on the expressway. And here's what happened in Orlando. Eventually, we began to move the crowd off the intersection. And here's the governor's new law, which specifically states it's illegal to willfully obstruct the free, convenient, and normal use of any public street. In terms of penalties, it states it's a pedestrian violation, meaning people are subject to being cited and fined. In the debate over this law, supporters noted some of the Black Lives Matter protesters blocked traffic without a permit and that Florida needed a law to crack down on any such disturbances in our state in the future. Zero tolerance for disorder. The law and the legislature's analysis of it also state it's a second-degree misdemeanor for three or more persons meeting together to commit a breach of the peace or any other unlawful act. You have to have is clear and predictable penalties. The governor spokeswoman drew a distinction in this tweet stating protest and riots are not the same thing. Opponents of the governor's law say they agree and say the problem is that the governor's law targets both and leaves it to law enforcement to decide whether to enforce the law and that it could be enforced or not enforced depending on the politics of the protesters blocking the streets. This bill now that's been signed into law that is just further complicating things for Floridians. It's making it confusing for law enforcement officers in the sense that so much of it is open to interpretation. The governor sidestepped a reporter's question about this in South Florida. His spokeswoman also tweeted, I didn't see anyone assaulting police, looting and burning down shops yesterday, did you? The answer to that question is, yes, we did. In the course of demonstrations blocking traffic in Tampa, a Florida Highway Patrol trooper was injured in an altercation with people at the scene. Three people were arrested, and three is the operative word there, because it's an example of where many others involved in this otherwise nonviolent demonstration could have faced more serious consequences if law enforcement had enforced the letter of the law. Let's go back to Hillsborough State Attorney Andrew Warren's explanation of why that is and why he spoke out against the bill. A riot is defined as any public disturbance in which three or more people essentially do something bad, engage in violent or destructive conduct. So under this definition, if you have a large group of people where only three of them do something bad, everybody else there is participating in a riot. Now, Obviously, beyond the three people in this case in Tampa, all the other people who weren't there weren't charged. So law enforcement was using some discretion. And you just heard the state attorney expressing his concerns about the law. It would be highly unlikely that he would pursue cases. But it leads again to the potential for interpretation and perhaps a patch quilt of responses from agency to agency, city to city, county to county across the entire state. And with that, it's also why our local leaders and the city on the state and on the federal level are all encouraging people to stay out of the streets and not block traffic uh, based on the potential for interpreting the law in different ways. So the law is currently facing a legal challenge. What's the core of that case and its status? Well, the case is still pending. It'll take a while to work through the courts. In terms of the gist of the argument, it is that it violates the right to free speech by chilling it wrongly by, among other things, uh, requiring one night stay in jail if you do commit a second degree misdemeanor in the course of breaching this particular law. And they say it sets up situations where citizens who are not involved and don't conduct any violence could be arrested themselves just for being associated with the protests where others uh, perhaps on the other side of the demonstration, could do something wrong. That's the key arguments that we're going to hear play out in court. All right, Craig Patrick, thank you.